What's going down? Will Freeman, RevolutionaryLifestyleDesign.com, coming at you today from Bangkok, live from BKK on a little uh, work recon mission here, thinking about moving here, so I'm going to do a recon of the scenes where I want to live, uh, how I want to live over here. Uh, Chiang Mai is getting a bit stale for me. So here, checking it out, uh, but still doing this content every day, man. So forgive me, I don't have my uh, setup, I don't have my printer, so I'm going to be reading a little bit off, off my computer here on how to be and why to be a boss player instead of the pretty boy playboy okay so this is grown man advice this is i'm turning 36 right if you're if you're reading a lot of the men's blogs and stuff um a lot of good guys in their 30s you know guys in their 40s too but a lot of it is is 20 year olds and you know it's about picking up girls and getting late and i'm not against that at all, okay? My best-selling products are about getting laid and picking up girls. Getting laid's fun. Picking up girls is fun, okay? But it comes down to priorities and it comes down to what what the rest of your life is going to look like. This applies to you if you're in your 30s or 40s as well, okay? It's being a boss player, not a playboy, right? So it's so much better to be a boss player, okay? Um, I always want to be a boss player in the game of life. Uh, since I was a kid, I always had a mission. And in my early 20s, that mission was trading, okay? And I I, I made some good money and, and I was successful in that. It just didn't last forever. And, you know, I had to find, I was a college dropout, so I had to find something I could do where I could make money. And that was the only the only way that I found was sales because I, I wasn't able to execute on a business level. I didn't have the execution skills. I also didn't have all the knowledge that I'm giving you guys on my side. If I'd had the stuff on my side, I would I would have done that straight up at 20 or 21 after um, you know I couldn't make more money trading. And so I I had to go into sales. I hated sales. I never wanted to be a salesman. It was the last job I wanted to do. But I was like, you know, I'm not. I can't figure out how to get a business started and I'm not going to sit around making 40 or 50 grand a year. I need to like, what's going to get me to six figures. So I went into sales and I didn't have a mission for a while. Um, after trading ended for a good part of my twenties, I didn't have that extra mission. So my mission became getting girls, right? I I was like, well, okay, I'm going to get really good at this. I was probably like a semi natural before, um, you know, I had girls in high school, I had girls after, but I was never on that you know, sort of higher, higher level. And so I was like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get really good at getting girls. And it's going to be like my thing to look forward to at the end of the sales day. It's going to be like, you know, a lot of fun. And I did have a lot of fun for a while. Okay. But I spent all my free time chasing mon or chasing girls. Okay. And, and sometimes four girls a week, five girls a week, some weeks that was new girls. It would be two, three, maybe four new girls four or five girls a week that I was seeing. Um, I mean, part of that's to do that I was 25 and I had, you know, 25 year old sex drive. But uh, like everything I do, it became an obsession. It became an addiction. Um, it, it, it was my de facto mission at that point. So again, like, I never do anything normally. I do it obsessively and I and I and that's all I can think about. And so that's what that became. And major mistake, major, major mistake. Okay, one of the biggest mistakes I made was that period of, I don't know, three, four years where I focused so much on getting girls, getting laid, having sex, um, you know, having fun with girls, going out, being the man about town, going to the, the right bars and the right clubs and, you know, the, you know, wearing the suit and having, you know, th that dude, right? The, the guy that, that sort of, you know, you've seen in TV shows and movies growing up and you, you kind of want to be that guy. Um, you know, I looked like I had a lot of money, but I mean, a hundred grand a year in Toronto is not a whole lot of money. Okay. Toronto, like any major city is expensive, right? Most, most sales guys, even my friends now are still selling, doing like 150 a year. They're paycheck to paycheck or they're close to it, or they'll save up money, but it's so they can drop 40 grand on a wedding, um, or, you know, mortgage payment or, you know, buying a house and then they're paycheck to paycheck. So, I mean, that's the reality for a lot of guys. And I shudder, I shudder to think the amount of money and time that I spent chasing girls that I could have been building a business, okay? I remember when I was, I think, 25 or 24, um, I'm, I'm, I'm 35 now, 
I, I was reading Tim Ferriss's book, The Four Hour Work Week, about going to Thailand. I'm in, finally got there. Okay, you know, but that's been in my that was in my head for a long time, and you know, doing that that sort of um, you know online business thing, and there was like rudimentary drop shipping that you could do back then, but you had to learn C++, you had to learn code. So I was doing it with a friend and he was super negative and that, that took a lot of the wind out of my sales. And then I, I said, well, okay, I'm going to do it myself. So I spent like, you know, a couple of weeks trying to learn C++ code, right? Terrible at it, right? I, I couldn't, I couldn't program a microwave, dude. Um, but really it was just a question of, of, you know, I wasn't able to execute. I wasn't able to do what it takes. I mean, I should have just paid a programmer to do it, right? I had the money, but I didn't have that level of execution. I, I didn't have like, well, I could just go to Thailand and make this money last for a decade. Well, I, you know, continue to scale this business up. Um, did not have that. Also didn't have the resources you guys have. Now the whole game's laid out. I mean, if you if you want to, even in just my side alone, that, that game building, that service business is laid out. But I don't re- recommend a drop shipping course or a drop shipping um, product per se, but it's like, man, 10 years ago, I could have been drop shipping or, I, you know, I could have had that, that online business and just think of what that would be now. Okay. Um, could have gone into online poker, just met a guy who's, who's made a couple mills in online poker, but uh, my uncle talked me out of it. Um, my family talked me out of it because, you know, they were saying there were bots on the other side and all that. And uh, I don't think you guys should be gamblers, okay? I, I, I did a video on murdering the gambling mentality, but I was really good at trading. Um, you know, there are odds in poker. The guys who tend to be good at trading are, you know, going to be good at, at poker. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just the list goes on and on of things that I could have done. And, like, you know, going back, I would have just built a service business. But I'm just putting that out there, like the time and the money I spent – if I just kept that attitude of boss player and I was like, well, trading didn't work, but I'm just going to become an executioner and just figure this business thing out and just sit here and be bored to death with code or, or, or just, you know, cold calling, um, you know, it would have been a game changer, but I didn't have the execution skills. I didn't have the balls to cold call back then because I hadn't been through that trial by fire, uh, corporate sales training that, that I eventually went through. And, uh, I mean, big mistake. Biggest mistake that I made with my life was not taking all that money I, I made in trading. And, you know, I was out of that by the time I think I was 23 or 24, maybe. I never would have had to work for someone, okay, ever. You know, trading was an independent contract job. I would have I would have been free and clear. I would have had my own business at 23 or 24 with a lot of money saved. Massive mistake, dudes. So that's something to remember. Um, and, and that's also your energetic prime. Okay, you can still have a lot of energy in your 30s and 40s, but you're not going to get back that 23 year old energy where you can go all night and and sleep for three hours and still be functional, right? It's it's a different ball game. So, not to say that having an active player phase isn't useful um, and fun. It it certainly is, but in moderation, man, you can do that a night or you know one or two nights a week with girls, right? But like, uh, dude, I was at the club you know, whatever, chasing girls down till four in the morning sometimes to take home a drunk girl and have condom sex and, you know, get three hours of sleep. And I was doing that every other night or having her over from online or something like that, you know, exhausted. Um, just, just major mistakes. Okay. Moderation's the key. All right. Um, you know, if you haven't had that player phase yet and you're, and it's available to you, it's not available to everyone. You know, there are genetic limiting factors. Um, you know, definitely get girls, you know, have fun, but like make sure the business is priority number one, because, um, that, that was a dangerous identity. Like my identity had become the pretty boy playboy, right? I'm the handsome guy who can get girls. Okay. Now keep in mind, I was, I was, I'm 35 now. I was a bit prettier back then. So, you know, it, it, it kind of felt like it fit. Um, and, I mean, the reality was I'd taken on that identity and, you know, it was about how many girls I could get, how many girls liked me until I woke up for the thousandth time exhausted, you know, because I'm ejaculating all the time. I'm going out all the time. I'm, I'm two hours outside the city in this girl's place and I got to get up at six o'clock in the morning or I got to be at, you know, I got to be at work at like eight o'clock. 
So, I mean, it was a mess, okay? And until I woke up for that, you know, I'd done it enough times, I was like, I'm not happy at all, okay? I'm not a stud. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a pretty boy, playboy. I'm a, I'm a pretty bitch. That's what I am. I'm a, I'm a bitch, okay? Because I'm taking orders from these, you know, the boys on the floor, we think we were cooler than, than you know, some of the higher-ups. But, like, dude, dude, we're taking orders for the, from those guys 50 hours a week. I exist to make those guys m money. Literally, that's that's the bulk of my life is devoted to making those guys more money, doing a job I hate for products that I don't believe in for a lot of the colleagues I didn't like. I mean, that that was the reality of it. And I, that, if I'd kept it up, that would have been my le the legacy of my life. Okay, you know, oh, I was a salesman for 30 years doing something. I hate it. And, you know, that was a big revelation. It was like, I'm not cool, man. I'm not cool. I'm not a stud. I'm, I'm, I'm a corporate slave here. That's the reality of it. You know, you feel like a stud on the weekend. Then Monday morning, you're under those fluorescent lights taking orders. And you got to do your 100 calls a day. It's like, dude, I got to do whatever I can to get out of this. Okay, period period, you know, and, you know, rude clients, management lying, um, colleagues lying, on and on and on. And it was a mess. I should have been saving every penny and going hard at getting free, okay? Because you don't want to realize you're a bitch and you're burnt out and you hate your job when it's too late. Okay, if you're already burnt out, it's too late. Because it's probably going to take you a couple of years to get that business off and running. So that, you know, you're, you've saved enough of cash for six months, two years worth of expenses. You've got some money flowing in consistently, right? Because you're running it on the side. Um, you know, you're, you're confident in your abilities because you've been doing it for a while. That's, that, that's probably not going to happen overnight. If you, if you read my stuff, okay, if you read my book, How to Sell, How to Learn How to Sell, and then How to Get Out and Build Your Service-Based Business, that's going to get you there faster, um, you read, I've got a lot of free stuff on that too, but I mean, again, there's a learning curve to it and you're already burnt out. Okay. So you're already burnt out. You don't want to be at the job. You want to quit, but you can't quit. A lot of guys quit at that point. That's a major mistake. You have to keep powering through and build a business on the side. Okay. So you want to start that business as soon as possible. So you're not starting it when you're already burnt out. Okay. I was burnt out and I'm still going through businesses, right? It took me like three or four I think I had five, five businesses all together. This one worked. The other ones didn't, you know, I had partner hijack our domain. I had a partner go MIA. Um, you know, I, I, I made bad business decisions. I went into debt on stuff again, man, this, this stuff, the knowledge that I'm giving you guys on the business side is stuff that I didn't have. Okay. So you can avoid all those dumb mistakes. Um, but at the end of the day, it was like, I should have been the second I stopped trading. I had that money. I should have been like, Mission, mission, mission. The mission is not girls. The mission is is a boss player in the game of life. How how do I get that success? How do I get that that big success? Right. You know, um, because when I was trading, it was like I'm I'm going to be really good at trading, and then I'm going to become a hedge fund manager, right? And that when that dream died, I needed to pick up the next dream, like big time entrepreneur, right? I need that. You need that big vision, that boss player vision, that 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 just allows you to power through every obstacle, okay? It lets you power through every obstacle because you know that that, that greatness is coming and that freedom is coming, that, that ability to, you know, do what you want in your life and be fulfilled is coming. And you don't have anything to lose because, I mean, you what, what do you have to lose? A job that you don't like, right? When you realize that. So, I mean, those days were rough, man. I, I, was, I was like, I, I've been running or was running an Ironman for half a decade. I'm a lot more comfortable now, a lot more, you know, softer now. But in those sales days, man, I had my sales armor on every day. I had my suit on. I would, you know, go and pitching these 60-year-old CEOs, you know, putting water on my face before the conference, putting that headphones in, psyching myself up. And then I'd go do it at night again, you know, with, with women. Um, and, uh, you know, and then, and then with the businesses on the side. So, yeah, man, it was rough. You want to have that business up and running f before you get bored of that job, okay? And the reason I tell you, if you can't start a business right now, the reason I say go into sales is because that's the only place you're going to make 
70 grand, 100 grand, 150 grand, right? That's the kind of money that's going to get you free to buy your way out of never having to do shit that you don't want to do because you can throw it into savings for, you know, expenses and you can throw it into the business. So, you know, you have to have that mentality. And more than that, it's about the self-esteem, okay? When all your self-esteem is built on being a pretty playboy, some dumb 20-year-old girl can just take that away from you instantly, right? Just by not liking you. You, you know, she rejects you like, Ugh, I guess I'm not as handsome as I thought. Or, you know, you're, you're struggling with your online dating that week or you're, or you're struggling with, you know, the girls you're picking up or whatever it is. You're like, well, I guess I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that guy. Like it's dependent on something on someone else's subjectivity, right? It's dependent on the subjectivity of whatever particular girl you're dealing with right now. And she just might not like your type, right? So your self-esteem is built on a, on a sandcastle basically. But when you're, you're a boss player, your self-esteem is built on like objective metrics, right? You're stylish, you're fit you're successful, you have actual money in the bank, you have an actual business, you are in charge of your own life, you're in charge of your own revenue, you can travel. That can't be taken away from you, right? Some girl can think you're not handsome, but it's that boss player in the game of life can't be taken away from you. Just like it couldn't be taken away from, you know, the guys that I, I worked for, you know, in the financial services company, the, the owners of that company probably had 20 or 30 mil. It's like, great. Their young sales guys can go out on the weekend and, and get laid. Like they don't care, you know. Like in in the scope of the world, those guys outrank the hell out of us. Okay, and in reality, if they want the hottest girl in the city, they can just pay the five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars to have her for the night. Okay, that's which which a lot of wealthy guys do. I don't know if you guys know that, but that's. <laughs> you know, that's part of the game. So like, I mean, you, you, we were kidding ourselves. You know, we, we thought we were studs. It's like, dude, what? Cause it was, you can, you can go out to a club and like take a, you know, a six and a half or a seven home for some sloppy condom sex. It's all wrong, man. All the wrong mentality. That objective metrics of success can't be taken from you. Okay. And, um, I mean, I don't mean to sound like materialistic, but it's true. You can say, this is how much money I made. This is the business. But even more than that, it's fitness, style, swagger, success, your intelligence, your business acumen, but, and also your ethics and, and having a good heart, your looks, your ability to get women. So all those things. So if like your game's not going well, it's not a big deal because you, you have, you're so much more than that. Like if one particular girl doesn't like you. I remember it would have to be like the girls in my office, like who I wasn't even interested in had to like me because my self-esteem was built on that. Well, if I'm this pretty boy player, then, then, you know, everyone around me has to be able to, um, see that or, or it's not real as opposed to, um, you know, like objective metrics, right. Where you're a boss, where you actually are doing it. Or if you're not there, you're like, you're a boss in training. Like, this is what I'm going to be, you know, achieving this is the success that i'm going to have you know and 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 all these multiple levels of self-esteem okay like diversify your self-esteem you know how they tell you to diversify your assets diversify your self-esteem so if one area is not tweaking particularly or not working particularly well you have all these other um areas to generate state from okay and with the ultimate meta frame the meta self-esteem frame of of success of of just and it's even more than success. It's just like you're a boss. Do you know how some guys, perfect example, dude, Rick, Rick Ross, right? That guy's obese, but he walks, like he's got the jewelry, he's got the swag, he's got the clothes, he's got the looks, he's got the, the attitude, he's the voice. Um, and like, let's say you didn't even know he was a famous rapper, but he, that dude walks in the room, you're like, that's presence, that, that dude's a boss, right? What does he say on every song? I'm a boss, right? He, he's put, he knows he's never going to be the pretty boy. Okay. But he's a boss. He's getting more girls than every one of those pickup artists. Okay. I get it. It's from, you know, a lot of that's from rap and success, but that's what I'm saying. Like actual real world success and have that attitude of just, even if he didn't have all that success walking around with that, that attitude of being a boss 
is 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 what it's about, man. You're just you're just playing to win the game of life, right? You know, more than just the the girl things is just a little piece, man. And and if you're and if you're caught up on girls as priority number one, you're building your empire on a sandcastle. Okay, like girls come and go. You know, some girls like you, some girls won't. It's like, dude, how's that gonna pay your rent though? How's that gonna get you to live in this? castle in the sky how's that going to get you to handle all your expenses how's that going to get you to be able to take care of your mom and your family when you get older you know how's that going to get you to touch a bunch of people's lives and help them and and you know create something of value create some type of legacy right it's not dude it's not it's not going to do that at all so a lot of guys have their priorities backwards man and i see all these pickup guys and these dating guys you know giving all this kind of advice and like going out every night it's that's backwards dude that's ass backwards, okay? Because they're 23, right? They're 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 still young. They don't they don't see what's gonna happen from doing that, or at least to their guys. They they might actually get rich from it, you know. While you guys spend all your time picking up, they get rich from all those boot camps that you're going to. But that's a different story. So, um, I mean, you want to be able to create a legacy, okay? You want to. Have diversified self-esteem with the meta frame of of being a boss player. Um, what you do as a man, your mission, your greatness, your legacy, your character. Okay, when you've made it, you can point to that. You can point to that to your family, your friends, or or other people. And it's like, don't pretend that you don't want other people's approval, man. That's what I mean. Every every person is live like if you're a complete outcast and you're shunned and you're disrespected by everybody i mean nobody wants that okay you can't point hey mom and dad look at all these girls i banged right like look at this sandcastle i built that's gonna get swept away by the tide as opposed to oh instead i actually built this business and i'm successful and when you get older i can take good care of you and if i choose to have kids i can we're, we're gonna be wealthy oh and i helped a bunch of people a bunch of my clients and um you know possibly building intergenerational wealth leveling up able to live anywhere you know able to live in the sky castle have all this you know the clothes and everything and, and rolling through and doing whatever i want to do right you can point to that okay society does not venerate the pickup artists okay who's who are the bill gates mark cuban right these are the guys on tv not the guy who can, who can go to the club and and get a seven one out of three nights okay is ass backwards not that there's anything wrong with picking up girls and getting laid, okay? I got a lot of stuff on that too. By all means, do it, but like do it once, once, one night a week or two nights a week. You can still get the same benefits, man. Or just get a girlfriend or just have a couple of girls on rotation that you see. I mean, it's the same deal, okay? You know, life's too short, man. You, you, you have to do, in your prime, man, you have to have be building that stuff. Same if you're my age too and you haven't built something if you're, or you're older, dude, it's at any given time, right, is never too late to start building. Because what else are you going to do? Not not build, not not aim to live your ideal lifestyle? I mean, you have to. So the other thing is, it's not all that cool to get a lot of girls in your 30s, okay? Um, if anything, guys do it secretly now, okay? Guys are married and they're, they're sneaking off because most guys are, you know, married by, by 35. When you're, when you're in your, like a lot of the reason that guys want to get girls is not so much about the sex. It's about that they want to be the stud, right? When you're like 18 to 25, the cool thing to do is the guy who gets a lot of girls. Okay. That's not cool in your thirties. In your thirties, the social thing of what's cool is usually success in business and having a nice looking family. Okay. Now I'm again, you did you heard my video on hopefully on you know should you have children and and i don't think you should have ch children in a family for society's approval but i'm saying that's what society points to um but you definitely definitely should have that successful business okay because then you get the social approval and it's the right thing for you the kids thing i don't know what the way it is marriage in the west and you know i'm still undecided on that but i'm saying the game changes from what's from what's viewed as cool because in reality, it's like you're 23. Your parents aren't worried. They're like, oh, he's just he's being the wild boy now, right? Like it's it's society changes what what they think is 
is cool. That's why you see all these pickup artists and stuff getting married in their mid thirties. Um, because it's not cool to be, you know, chasing down girls at the club anymore. Right. I don't chase girls down in the club anymore. So, you know, start preparing for success early, as early as you can. You still want to have women, but it's a lower priority. Like, dude, when I'm talking about getting girls and getting laid and like metrics and some of those articles, that's only on this site. Okay. Or, you know, sometimes with my friends, but with my friends, we don't really talk about that that much. We really mostly talk about business and joking around and whatever. It's rare when there's a conversation where the guy's talking about how much he got laid, you know, because my friends, all my friends do get laid. Like we don't, it, it's not something that, you know, we have to talk about. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a different ball game, you know, it, it's on that boss player ball game. Like I don't even feel right at a club. Even if I get laid, I'm like, well, I'm too old to be here, dude. What am I doing here? I should be, I should be in bed by 1030 so I can get up at 6 a.m. and kill the day. Even, even if I'm pulling a girl back home, I'm like, oh, what am I doing? To me, going to a club now and having a few drinks, it's like, feels like, unless I'm on vacation, it's like McDonald's. It's like, as I'm eating the McDonald's, I'm like, oh, you idiot. This is a mistake. And then I wake up the next day, I'm hungover, I'm like, get the girl in my bed, I gotta get up early, and I'm like, oh, why'd you do that, right? You know, you should have just called the girl that you were already seeing and, and, you know, had an early night and, you know, left it at that. So, different ball game in your 30s. Um, of course, you're going to still want to have women or a girlfriend, whatever you want, but... Getting not, if getting women, if being the pretty boy playboy is your number one priority, you're hustling backwards, dude. You are hustling backwards. If you're listening to all those pickup and dating things, they got your priorities all out of whack, man. Because that they want to get paid, right? So the the more you're invested in that, the more likely you are to buy a product and buy a boot camp and tell your friends about it. Okay, like 80, 90 percent of my traffic still comes from the sex and dating stuff. But when I get you here, okay. I want to I want to transmute that energy like you can still get laid, you can still have good sex, but let me transmute that energy to get you to where you are playing the entire game of life, man, not just that little area with women, dude. Like boss player game, you're 24/7 waking up to win across all the areas, man. You know, trying to be the best son, the best friend, the best entrepreneur, um, you know, well-dressed, like fit, all, like everything, man. Okay? And that success and that greatness and that mission is the number one thing. Because that's a game you can play forever, man. Like, looks-wise, you peak at 25, okay? Football, you know, you're out of there by 26. Sports, acting, music. Dude, in business, guys peak in their 60s, okay? You can play the business game, the success game for the rest of your life. Shit, you can peak in your 70s, right? You can peak in your... Warren Buffett's still going, man. He's still going, Still getting richer. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Um, you know, it's 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 totally crazy. And uh, I mean, it's the best frame to have. Like that corporate, you know, that, that not corporate, but you're an entrepreneur. You call your own shots. You're a boss. You're successful. You don't take orders. You dress well. You're stylish. You're fit. You walk like a boss. You talk like a boss. I mean, dude, that's the frame, man. You got to internalize that. The, that's number one, okay? Now, I'm not, I'm no, I know this sounds materialistic. There's still, you know, spiritual components and stuff that I talk about in other videos. But I'm saying just for your day-to-day, -day, you know, for your self-esteem, uh, you deserve to feel good about yourself. So, I mean, feeling like a boss is, 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 is the, the best way to do that. And then you have the other self-esteem areas, right? As many as you can. Intelligence, fitness, Women, all that, all that other stuff, as a, you know, diversified self-esteem. So you can take state from each of those little areas, right? Like you got a workout, you made some progress, boom, that that adds to your state for that day. But the meta frame is the boss. So that makes the case for um, conservative style, in my opinion. Okay, conservative style dressing like you have money. All right, as opposed to that bad boy you know, playboy rebel style. 
okay? And I think this applies even if you're 21 because you're dressing like, even if you're not wealthy right now, you're dressing like the guy that you're going to be and you're hypnotizing yourself like, I am successful, I am wealthy. When you dress like that bad boy, you feel like that bad, that rebel, that outcast, or not that outcast, but the, the rebel, the bad boy, the, the, that dude. Um, I mean, you get stayed off of that, but you don't get that higher level success, right? You don't get that higher level admiration from everybody, right? You just have some girls that, that might be into you, you know? But adults look at you with ripped jeans and they're like, oh, poor kid, he doesn't have enough money <laughs> to buy a proper pair of pants, right? Like, I say for everyone now, young guys, older guys, conserve a style with a bit of edge. The guy that I look to is Jason Statham, right? We got the same haircut. We got the same little stubble here. In his off time, He's usually in a tight polo or he's in a tight fitting sweater or he's in a suit. Um, you know, one of those where he, he looks like he has money, but he's got, you can see the fitness and you can see a bit of the attitude. So it's kind of like wealthy, but a bit of that thug, a bit of that like rough edge, right? So you still have a bit of that sex appeal. I think that's the ideal combination. Okay. But, but having that, that, that money is the extra edge because that's status. And that's one of the most attractive things to women, man. You, you, you know, the most attractive Look for a man. It's not naked. It's in a it's in a suit. It's in a three piece suit. Okay. When I would walk to work, if I had a client meeting and I'm wearing my two thousand dollar suit back when I, you know, cared about dropping two thousand on a suit, the most looks I ever get from women would would be wearing that suit, and it would be double what what I would normally get. Double. Okay. If you're wondering, you know, what style should I choose, right? You know, you have all these different niches and whatever. And like, you dress like you have money. And show that you're fit and be clean and look good. That's the tops. All right. That's the number one. And if you want, you can check out my article, article revolutionarylifestyledesign.com, on how to build your entire wardrobe for under $2,000. Some of those items are a bit dated. I think the article is four or five years old. But you can also check the resources section to get some of the newer updates. But the bulk of it's still good. Um, so, have some suits, have some slick business casual clothes, have some polos and uh, chinos. See, I wear, uh, usually wear like a polo like this, a little tight fitting uh, polo here. Show off uh, a little bit, little bit what I got going on. Have a watch, have a couple, uh, have a tag Hoyer from when I cared about that stuff. And um, you don't even have to drop that much cash though. A nice suit from Zara is like $300. You get a custom tailored for like 50. You can get polos for cheap. Just make sure they're well-fitting. Uh, you can get a knockoff, one of those big face knockoff watches. Um, that bad boy rebel look might seem cool for a minute, but it wears on you psychologically. Everything around you is hypnosis, okay? Your environment, the people you surround yourself with, the media you consume, the way you dress, the way you walk, where you live, all of that is hypnotizing you, okay? If you're dressing like that bad boy rebel and you're living in a shit apartment, and you know you're around guys who don't have goals all they want to do is is party and, and hook up with girls you're you're not going to feel the highest level of self-esteem that you can feel man it's also going to encourage you to do worse behaviors like drink more and and you know maybe do drugs and things like that i remember i couldn't wait to get to thailand you know this is about three and a half years ago i couldn't wait to get out of here so i, I could get out of my monkey suit and every day i could dress you know how i wanted to and i had this stupid idea where i was going to sell like the free world rock star lifestyle because I was reading that digital nomad stuff and I was like, Oh cool, man, I can figure out th what those guys are doing. And that'll be a few products for me to sell my guys. Um, it didn't turn out that way because the vast majority of that's a scam. I'm not going to sell you guys garbage drop shipping courses and tell you to come out to Thailand with barely any money to gamble on a drop shipping business. That's probably not going to work. Okay. I was, I was like, this is trash. And also, you know, I mean, it felt cool to be rolling around on a motorbike and I'm, I'm, you know, I got ripped jeans and whatever. And then I look around and I'm like, dude, the, the Western guys here look so terrible, so terrible. And Chiang Mai, these digital nomads, I was like, I can't in any way be associated with, aided with them. And also like I had a girl over and she came to my place. She's like, oh, it's a nice place. I thought you were poor. And I was like, why would you think that? Oh, your, your jeans are ripped. And I was like, okay. So some people might get it, but like, you know, over here, especially in Asia, it's like looking like you have money goes a long way. 
a lot of people didn't grow up with money, so they're going to try and look like they have money. They can't understand why someone would walk around with holes in their jeans, even if those jeans are $200, right? And more than that, even in the West too, like you want to be able to go to a nice restaurant. You want to be able to go to a nice mall and not feel like you're lower than the people who work in the shops, right? When you're, when you're dressed like that, that's how you can feel. Like you want to feel like you're, you fit in. Like when you're living in a nice place, you're going to nice restaurants, you're going to, you know, taking your girl, girl somewhere nice. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying you have to blow a lot of money on this. If you don't have a lot of money, you can just do it occasionally, but you want to be able to feel like you fit in like, Hey, I belong here. You know, I belong here. I'm successful. I'm living in a, you know, a nice building where it's quiet and, and it's clean and everything. And, and I belong here as opposed to like getting sort of side eyes of like, you know, what's, what's this guy up to? What's this guy about? Oh, is he going to steal something? Cause he, he looks like, you know, that potential guy. Right. Like I haven't had anyone look at that mean that that way to me in a long time, man. When I was younger, I did though, because I looked I looked like it. I looked like you know I looked like I was trouble, you know. So that's that's how people would would think about you, and then that's how you think about yourself. Okay, I think that I make the case for conservative, um, you know, stylish conservative, not those big Jeb Bush floppy khaki pants and those baggy, you know, horribly colored untailored button down shirts i'm like conservative cool like you know jason statham a bit of maybe a bit of stubble a bit of edge i use a big uh, aviator shades um to to give that edge i don't wear a suit out here because it's too damn hot but i would if i could um usually i'm just in a polo and and some you know tailored chinos maybe some you know nice dark denim um you know l looking like you have money Looking like your styles, looking like a boss. Okay. Yeah, the the I'd rather get treated with extra respect than less respect than I deserve. Like if dude, if you've got a lot of money but you're you're walking around in like a scrub, it's like what what you know what what is all that money for, dude? The first thing people look at is is the first thing people see is is the way that you look. I would look at guys like Ross Perot who's a billionaire, a lot of these billionaire guys, and they just look terrible. I'm like, dude, I wouldn't trade places with you. Like, <laughs> the the money is the tool to, to, to get, you know, things that you want in life. And part of that self-esteem, it's like, at least get someone to dress you if you don't know how to dress. You know, Bill Gates, Ross Perot, I mean, they, they look like they're dressed by Edward Scissorhands. I mean, it's a disaster. Like, they they achieve that boss level success, but they didn't. They don't walk like a boss. They don't talk like a boss, right? Look at look at um, P Diddy, okay? When he's at an award show and he's dressed up in in a suit, nice fitting suit, right? Not that like Cedric the Entertainer picnic table suit, but nice fitting suit, you know, real slick. But you can tell, you know, he might have the shades on. He's got the money, but he's also got the swagger and he's got the the style game. You can tell as a boss, dude. Take all his money away. Take his fame away. That guy walks into a coffee shop. You're like, that guy's somebody, right? That guy's a boss. Even if he didn't have the rest of the trappings, okay? That's what I'm trying to say, man. Like that that bigger meta game. Um, so dressing like a boss is the move, especially out here in Asia. But I think in the West too, even if you're young, dude, because you're going to be able to hypnotize yourself positively. You know, the way you walk, the way you talk, your environment, um, where you live, the media you take in, everything, dude, is low-grade hypnosis. You're being hypnotized all the time. Everything's influencing you. Your brain's a sponge. You can be a really smart guy, but you can, if you, if you just read negative information all day, you're going to get depressed. You know, if you're living in a, a terrible apartment, unless, you know, I've done that as a part of a bigger goal, right? I was like saving money. But you want to be able to get to where you can live comfortable, where, where, you know, the places you're walking are nice. The girls you're dating are nice. The, your friends are winners. Your environment's nice. Where you live is nice. Your view is nice. Your, your style is nice. Your money's nice. Your bank account's nice. Your business is nice. Okay, you might not have all that yet, but like working towards that. So at least you know that it's coming. All that stuff hypnotizes you. You wake up with all that stuff, Right. You know, when all you have is the girl thing, dude, like that's, you're building a, 
you're building your life on a sandcastle, man. You're building life on a sandcastle. And guess what, man? You can still get girls when you're 35. You can still get 25-year-olds, 24-year-olds, too, if you take care of yourself. You can get them in, in your 40s, too. It takes more work. But, um, I mean, even then, you can get 30-year-olds, too, and 35-year-olds, which I like. I like all women. So, like, you don't have to cram everything into, like, Oh man, well I'm 23 to 25. I need to get all the girls because I won't be able to. No, you can still get girls, dude. You're gonna have women the rest of your life, in, even in your 60s if you're not married. They're not gonna be 20 year olds, but you you know you can get a 50 year old, okay? When you're 40s, you can get 25 year olds, 30 year olds, 35 year olds. And if you really want casual sex with hot girls, you can pay for it, okay? Not advocating that or de-advocating that. I think it's a victimless crime. I think it's it's prostitution. No one's getting hurt by that. But, you know, it's like the big hedge fund guys, they're not at the club chasing down sixes. They're, they're dropping $1,000 to have the hottest girl in the city come, you know, come to their, come to their office, right, and, and, and do whatever they want, basically. Okay, and don't think those guys aren't. All those, all the rich guys, the politicians, the hedge funds, got, all those guys do it, right? You know, this, that it is what it is, okay? I'm not advocating it, but I'm saying, like, dude, if you really want to just bunch of meaningless casual sex, again, being a boss makes that very easy. So, I mean, that's the deal. Getting to where you can live somewhere nice, dress nice, work somewhere nice, all big. Even if you don't look like a model, okay? Rick Ross does not look like a model. But he, you can tell he's a cool dude, okay? Take the, the rap away. That's a boss, man. He's a boss player, right? With the rap, with the success, with his mission, I mean, he's every other every song he's a boss because he, you know, and he, he is right. Um, you know, it's like even if you're an overweight dude, you can still walk, talk, and roll around like your boss. There's another movie called uh, Dogs of War with Jonah Hill where they go to they're going to Iraq and selling guns and stuff. He's obese in that movie, but he's got a tight suit on he's got the aviator shades he's got a hair slick back walks with a swagger that character could get laid in real life but more importantly he's even with all that extra weight he's still a boss you know what i mean so even if you don't look like a model fitness style money status swagger action boss player go a long way but more importantly it's more important than getting the girls okay if you're already successful dress the part it's the first thing that people see don't hide your success. Um, you know, don't be Ross Perot. Don't be Bill Gates. Don't be driving around a beat up car. You know, act the part. Have the self esteem, and and make being a boss player your your number one priority in life, dude. Like this, this. If you're gonna have an image, right? Okay. You know, you might be the spirit, and this body might just be the vehicle, the avatar that you're moving through this world of matter, energy, space, and time in. Okay, but at least level up that avatar to to the highest level okay not just in one little area with girls right not just in you know those avatars will have like 10 different skill sets or whatever you you want to get like you know level that up to boss man level that up to boss you know because your self-esteem is going to be so much better from from having that 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 big meta mission that can't be taken away that's not based on some girl's subjectivity it's objective you know you get external validation for it and then still having the girl stuff and all the other stuff in, in diversified self-esteem um, areas all together leading up to being this boss player. So if one falls behind, it's it's okay. You still got all this other stuff leading up to that boss player level. So I hope you found that useful. I know it was a long video and uh, rambling, but I wanted to cover a lot of stuff. So appreciate you watching. Appreciate you listening. Check me out, revolutionarylifestyledesign.com. Much love to you.